So this video will discuss problem number six from the 2021 AP Stats exam. Problem number six is always what we refer to as the investigative task. It's designed to take longer than the first five free response questions. And it's also going to span several different units of study from the AP Stats curriculum. So in 2021, problem number six is talking about attendance at games for a baseball team being investigated by the team's owner. The box plots that we see presented in the onset of the problem summarize attendance as average attendees per game for 47 years of the team's existence. We have 30 years of games played in the old stadium and 17 years played in the new stadium. So you see the box plots here, old stadium on the left, new stadium on the right. And in part A, it says compare the distributions of average attendance between the old stadium and the new stadium. So if you're ever asked to describe a distribution or compare distributions, you want to make sure you hit on these elements. So I use the acronym SOX, shape, outlier, center, and spread. You want to make sure you comment on each of those elements. And so we'll just kind of go through what I've said here and make sure that we've satisfied the requirements. So I noticed that this box plot right here, these two tails have roughly the same length. These two boxes have roughly the same length. Uh, there's not really a, a big width discrepancy between the width of the boxes, the width of the tails. So what I argued, as I said, for the old stadium, we have a roughly symmetric shape. While at the new stadium, we've got this tail that's pulling downward. Now, if this was plotted horizontally rather than vertically, the tail would be extending to the left on the number line. So we have a skew to the left for the new stadium's shape. So we've hit on the shape of both box plots. Now for, for outliers, I did that at the very end. There's no obvious data points that are separated from the tails of these box plots. So I said at the very end here, neither stadium's data set seems to possess any visual outli outliers. For center, uh, we could say something about mean. We could say something about median. Well, with box plots, it's super easy to go with median. So the median for the old stadium is about right here. So we've got an, a median of approximately 16,000. And then the median for the new stadium is significantly higher, somewhere up near 25,000. And then for spread, you could give the range. You could give the standard deviation. I went with the interquartile range. So I just tried to figure out what the value here minus the value here was. So that turned out to be approximately 3,500 for the old stadium. And then we have a slightly longer span for lower quartile to upper quartile for the new stadium. I estimated that to be approximately 4,000. So we've hit on each of the elements of this and that would satisfy part A. Part B gives us a scatter plot. And in the scatter plot, they're showing average attendance over time, right, versus year. So we see the old stadium's data points depicted by the squares. We see the new stadium's data points depicted by the dots. So we're asked to compare the trends in average attendance over time between the new and old stadium. Now, if you're asked to describe or compare distributions, we use the SOX analysis. If we are asked to describe a trend from a scatter plot, we want to make sure we hit on form. Is it linear? Is it exponential? Is there no general form? Uh, direction, is it weak? Is it moderate? Is it strong? That's wrong. That's strength, sorry. Got a little bit ahead of myself. Direction would be positive or negative, right? We're increasing or we're decreasing. And then strength would be weak, moderate, or strong. So what I did is I just tried to kind of visualize approximate least squares regression lines placed into the old stadium's data set. So you see, see that in red. And then into the new stadium's data set, you see that one in blue. And so the trend in yearly average attendance per game at the old stadium has seemed to increase slightly over time, right? Not very drastically, but we do have that slight uptick over time for the old stadium. And I also said... I have a follow-up sentence where I said something about each of these elements. So the yearly average attendance shows a week. The, the, the data points aren't really tied that closely to that line. There's not really an obvious trend here, but there's a weak positive linear trend for the old stadium's data set. For the new stadium's data set, these points are much more tightly tied to the approximately approximate least squares regression line than at the old stadium. And then also the slope of this is much higher, right? A much 
higher positive value than the slope of the approximate least squares regression line for the old stadium. So I said the trend in yearly average attendance per game at the new stadium has clearly increased more rapidly over time than that of the old stadium. And the new stadium has an average yearly attendance relationship over time that is strong, positive, and linear. Part C presents us with a couple more scatter plots. So the first scatter plot, we've got average attendance uh, and number of games won on the x-axis. And then we've got the same scatter plot over here, but we have a designation between the old stadium data points and the new stadium data points, kind of like we had back in Part B. So Part 1 of Part C says graph one shows the average attendance versus number of games won each year. Describe the relationship between the variables. Again, we want to hit on form, direction, and strength. Uh, what I said to kick this off, though, was this graph clearly shows that as the number of games won increases, the yearly average attendance also increases, right? We, we have a clear positive trend with those data points. I then went ahead and gave my follow-up statement where I made sure I hit on each of those elements form direction and strength so I, I said that you know the approximate least squares regression line that would fit into the scatter plot is going to be pretty close to the majority of those data points so i thought we had a strong clearly positive and linear relationship for part one of part c now for part two of part c it's it's now asking us to shift our attention to the second scatter plot presented so We've got the same information, but we have now a distinction between which points came from the old stadium and which points came from the new stadium. So what I tried to do is I tried to put an approximate least squares regression line into the old stadium's data points and another one into the new stadium's data points. And what we're asked to do here is we're asked to try to decide, does this scatter plot suggest that the rate at which the attendance is changing as the number of games one increases is different in the new stadium compared to the old stadium, explain your reasoning. So I looked at these. Now these are approximate, and it does look like the blue line that I have here has a slightly higher slope than the red line that I had here, but those are just approximate least squares regression lines. Those slopes are super close together. So I know that a slope is a rate, and those slopes are pretty much the same. So I said since the approximate least squares regression line for each of these two stadiums seem to have approximately the same slope as each other. The rate at which the average attendance changes does not appear to be different for the two stadiums relative to number of games won. And then the last part here, they ask us to consider three variables, number of games won, year, and stadium. Based on the graphs, explain how one of those variables could be a confounding variable in relationship between average attendance and the other variables. So a confounding variable would be a variable that you're not necessarily measuring in the analysis that you're doing that actually does influence the conclusion that you're drawing from the analysis that you're doing. So if we consider the scatter plot relating number of games won as the explanatory variable and average attendance as the response variable. So explanatory would go on the x-axis, response would go on the y-axis. The scatter plot would imply that as the number of games won increases, average attendance also increases. It's exactly what we have right here. Graph 1 in part B. Or part C, excuse me. The box plots from part A imply though that the new stadium produces a higher average attendance than the old stadium does. So what I thought was, you know, maybe in this city, the population has drastically increased over the past 47 years. If that were the case, the average attendance for the new stadium would be expected to be higher than the old stadium. They just have a much larger fan base that they can draw into the new stadium than the old stadium had to draw to it. So it could be the case that it's not necessarily the number of games won or the quality of the team that drives attendance higher or whether or not the games were played in a newer facility. What's really making the attendance higher at the new stadium than the old stadium is the fact that the population of the city has grown so rapidly over time. So if we were not measuring year, or we're not accounting for the population of the city, 
over time, the population growth of the city over time, we might be inclined to say, like we see back here, number of games won increases, average attendance increases. Well, over time, like we see in this scatter plot, over time we also see attendance increasing very drastically at the new stadium. Right, but we do see that the, the lowest attendances tended to be at the earlier part of the data set from the scatter plot back in part B. So it could very well be the case that the population growth within the city drove up average attendance more so than the quality of the team or the modern facility that the team was playing in. I guess before we close this video, you could have done something different than what I elected to do. You, you could have talked about relating uh, year and average attendance, and then talked about how the other two could have been a confounding variable or could have influenced the variable that you were actually trying to measure. So there's quite a bit of flexibility involved in part C. You just want to make sure you use context and you have a lot of detail supporting the conclusion that you are going with.